Happy Tuesday, Vine Life family. Thank you for tuning in to the broadcast of our Tuesday Bible study. So glad that you joined us. We're going to have a great time in the Word of God today. And let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to start off this service with a few announcements. These announcements are very important and very exciting. Number one, this coming Sunday, July 11th, we're going to be celebrating Dr. Wilkes' 71st birthday. Amen. So we're excited about that. Uh, the second day is exciting as well. August 1st, Sunday, August 1st, we'll be moving into our new location. Now, with regard to both of these special dates, these exciting dates, these very important dates, we are looking for 100% participation. These are days where the entire Vine Life family needs to be together in person. Amen. We need, we need to assemble ourselves together. 100% of us need to do that and celebrate the gift that God has given us in our man of God and also the gift that God has given us in our new location. We want to make sure that all of us are there. Glory to God. So let's get into the word and let's uh, look at the Bible I want to look at this very interesting statement that the Apostle Paul made in his letter, his second letter to the Corinthian church. And uh, I want to look at some truths behind this statement in preparation for this coming Sunday, which is uh, Dr. Wilkes' birthday celebration. Amen. So go ahead and grab your Bibles. I'll give you a moment to do that. But we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and we're going to read verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and we're going to read verse 13. We're going to look at this statement that the Apostle Paul made and we're going to explore the truths behind this statement. There's some truths behind this statement um, that he made that we're going to explore today in preparation for this coming Sunday. Amen? So, uh, let's read 2 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 13. It says, For in what respect were you, the Corinthian church, put to a disadvantage in comparison with the rest of the churches, unless it was for the fact that I myself did not burden you with my financial support? Pardon me, for doing you this injustice. Now, <laughs> this scripture right here, I haven't heard too many people teach on this. That doesn't uh, negate it being a part of the word of God. This is, this is a scripture uh, that was written by the apostle Paul um, let's read it again because this scripture I find very interesting because it really contradicts the belief of a lot of Christians. Let's read it again. It says, for in what respect were you put to a disadvantage in comparison with the rest of the churches unless so he's saying unless because he's going to give the reason that the Corinthian church was put at a disadvantage. So here it is. Here's the reason that the Apostle Paul um, presents with regard to his statement that the Corinthian church was put to a disadvantage. This is the reason. He says, it was for the fact that I myself did not burden you with my financial support. Pardon me for doing you this injustice. Well, it seems, it seems like, and, and this is the reality of most Christians, most churches, if you went to church and there was an offering, a lot of people, people who didn't, don't have a revelation of the benefits of giving, giving in the particular context of partnership 
with a man of God would be happy. You know, you go to church and the pastor says, hey, I'm not going to take them to the offering today. Most people would rejoice. But the Apostle Paul says the fact that he did not take up an offering for himself, for his personal support, put the Corinthian church at a disadvantage. Amen. Most people, most people would think that it's a disadvantage for a preacher to take up an offering, let alone an offering for his own support. That's what most people would interpret as a disadvantage. They would say, you're taking money from the people. You're, you, you're, you're putting the people at a disadvantage because you're taking money from them. But the Apostle Paul was of the opposite mindset. Amen. The, the Apostle Paul believed that him not taking up an offering an offering in his own support put that church at a disadvantage. That is a profound statement. So let's look. Let's, let's, let's go through the scripture and see if we can discover the truths that will give explanation to this statement. Amen. So in doing that, Let's go over to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And let's see if we can rightly divide the word of truth and come up with some supporting or some, some, some scriptures that would support the statement that, that the Apostle Paul made in 2 Corinthians 12, 13. That statement being that, and I'm paraphrasing, that he put that church, the Corinthian church, at a disadvantage by not uh, giving them an opportunity to sow into his life. And we're going to look at Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 17. Now, Philippians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul is addressing and making a commentary um, with regard to the Philippian church sowing or partnering, partnering with him financially. This church, the Philippian church, uh, supported Paul financially. And so he's making statements in that regard in response to their financial partnership. Verse 17, he says, not that I seek or am eager for your gift. So he's talking about the motive, his motive, Behind the offering. Now, we know that the Apostle Paul, he made the statement, follow me as I follow, follow the Lord. So we know the Apostle Paul also said it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Why am I saying that? Because we can deduce from those statements that the Apostle Paul lived a life where his goal was to follow the Lord. The Apostle Paul's main primary goal was to do the will of God. So if the Apostle Paul is taking up an offering, he's doing that in accordance with the will of God. Amen. Now, he's talking about his motive behind taking up the offering. He says, not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and I'm eager for fruit which increases to your credit. The harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account. Let me read that again. Again, we're looking at the Apostle Paul expressing and explaining his motive behind taking up an offering, an offering that was for his personal support. He says, not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and am eager for the fruit which increases to your credit, the harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account. 
So, when the Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian church that they are put at a disadvantage as a result or resulting from him not taking up an offering for his personal support, when he makes that statement, he's making it on the basis that when he does allow or give a church opportunity to sow into his life, to contribute financially to his personal support, number one, they are, let me read it, they are, there's fruit increasing to their credit, and there's a harvest of blessing that is accumulating to their account. What account? Their heavenly account. Now, stay there in Philippians 4. Let's go up two verses to verse 15. Now, this is the Apostle Paul informing the Philippian church what happens. He's, he's informing them. He's giving them revelation knowledge with regard to what happened when they contributed to his financial support. He says, now you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I left Macedonia, no church assembly entered into partnership with me and opened up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving except you only. Okay, so here's another truth. Here's the second truth related to the Apostle Paul's statement to the Corinthian church with regard to him omitting or not giving them an opportunity to contribute financially to his personal support. They missed out on an opportunity that they were put at a disadvantage because they missed out on an opportunity to open up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving. Amen. So we're getting insight into the statement that the Apostle Paul made to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 13, in which he said that they were put to a disadvantage due to the fact that he didn't allow them or give them an opportunity to sow into his life financially. Amen. Now, stay in uh, Philippians chapter 4. We're going to go up to verse 14. We're going to learn another truth. This will be the third truth that corresponds with the statement that the Apostle Paul made in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. It says, but it was right and commendable and noble of you to contribute for my needs and to share my difficulties with me. So they were put, the Corinthian church was put to a disadvantage because they missed out or they weren't provided with an opportunity to do something that was right, something that was commendable, and something that was noble. Financial contributions to a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ is something that is right, commendable, and noble. Amen. One of the laws that govern the anointing is you and I bearing one another's burdens. If we want to experience the anointing of God in our lives, we have to be willing to bear the burdens of one another. And the Apostle Paul talked about difficulties that he was having. Now, if the Apostle Paul would have allowed the Corinthian church to contribute to alleviate, help him allevi help alleviate some of his difficulties, to bear his burden, that would have given them an opportunity to experience the anointing of God. Amen. That's another truth attached to that statement. Amen. Now, 
We're, we're going to stay, we're going to remain in Philippians chapter 4, but we're going to go down to verse 18. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Uh, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, I believe this is the fifth truth that corresponds with the Apostle Paul's statement that he made to the Corinthian church, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 13. It says, but I have your full payment and more. I have everything I need, and I'm amply supplied. He's talking about the gift that they gave him, that that church, the Philippian church, gave him. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gift you sent me, they are the gifts that you sent me, the financial contributions that the Philippian church made uh, to the apostle, the apostle Paul are a fragrant odor of an offering, a sacrifice, which God, which God, G-O-D, our Father in heaven, which God welcomes and in which he, God, delights. Again, the financial contributions that the Philippian church made to the Apostle Paul, the financial contribution, the opportunity to contribute financially to the Apostle Paul, which the uh, Corinthian church was deprived of, are a fragrant odor of an offering, a sacrifice which God, our Father, God, G-O-D, the only true and living God, welcomes and in which he, God, delights. If any time that you and I, or any believer, has an opportunity to do something that God welcomes and that God delights, and if we're, that opportunity is, if we're deprived of that opportunity, puts us at a disadvantage. It's always an advantage when you and I as believers have opportunity, <coughs> excuse me, to do something that God is pleased with, something that God delights, something that God welcomes. Amen. It puts us at a great advantage when we can please God. Glory to God. Now, verse 19. So that's six. I believe we're at, we're at the sixth truth that corresponds with the statement that the Apostle Paul made in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Now we're going to number 7. Verse 19, it says, My God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need, every meaning spiritual and material need, every need according to his riches and glory in Christ the anointed Jesus. So, when we contribute financially, in support of the man of God, God now, as a result of us doing that, we are now in a position where God can meet all of our needs, whether they be spiritual and or material. God can meet all of our needs, and he does meet all of our needs when we contribute to the fin financially uh, in support of the man or woman of God. And so, when the Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian church that they were put to a disadvantage, that is the seventh disadvantage that they, uh, th that they suffered as a result of the Apostle Paul not giving them the opportunity to sow into his life financially. Now, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. There's, <laughs> there's some more truths that correspond with that statement. Now let, let me interject this here. Seven advantages that we've, we, we've, we've discovered, seven advantages that correspond with us sowing into the life of our man of God. Amen. Seven. We're not even done yet, but there are seven advantages. So this, this, this uh, Sunday, Today, today as well, but this Sunday, we're, we're, we're placing special emphasis on that. But you and I 
Although we're celebrating, we're honoring the man of God, although we're doing that, you and I have put ourselves in a, we're, 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 we have an opportunity come this Sunday to benefit from more than seven advantages. These advantages are advantages that we are afforded, afforded uh, by God. <laughs> These are seven ways that we can advantage from our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father who has a ceaseless and eternal supply. Amen. A supply that can't run out. A supply that can meet all of our needs, that can far exceed all of our needs. We, we on Sunday, we have an opportunity to put ourselves in a position where we can experience more than seven advantages, seven God-supplied advantages. Amen. That is a blessing. Glory to God. All right, where are we at? Let's look at that eighth advantage. Turn over to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Now this is huge here. Colossians chapter 1. And uh, let's read verse 24. Colossians chapter 1. We're going to read verse 24 and verse 25. This is the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Colossian church. It says, Even now I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings on your behalf. Just, I mean, just that statement right there. If a man of God is suffering on your behalf, it's only right for you to contribute to his needs, especially his difficulties. When he's going through difficulties, those difficulties, he's not going through those difficulties uh, on his behalf. He's going through those difficulties on our behalf. Amen. Even now, I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings on your behalf, and in my own person, I am making up whatever is still lacking and remains to be completed on, your, on our part of Christ's sufferings for the sake of his body, us, the body of Christ, which is the church. In it, in the church, I became a minister in accordance with the divine stewardship which was entrusted to me for you. Let me read that again. In it, I became a minister according to the divine stewardship. He's talking about the grace, the anointing that God has entrusted to him, which was entrusted to me for you as its object and for your benefit. So the grace on your man of God, the anointing on his life, isn't just for him. It's for you. You are literally the object of the grace of God on your man of God's life. When God anointed your man of God, he had you in mind. He gave him that anointing. He entrusted, he entrusted that grace, that anointing, to the man of God with you in mind. You are the object. So when it comes to Dr. Wilkes, we are the object of the anointing on his life. Amen. Now, turn over to Philippians chapter 1. And it will end here. Philippians chapter 1. Remember, we are the object of the grace, the anointing that God has entrusted to Dr. Wilkes. He did it on our behalf. So we're looking at Philippians chapter 1, and we're going to re begin reading at verse 5. Again, the Apostle Paul says, I thank my God for your fellowship, your sympathetic cooperation, and contributions, and partnership, and advancing the good news, the gospel, from the first day you heard it until now. And I'm convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who begun a good work in you, will continue until the day of Jesus Christ right up to the time of his return. Now, the good work that the Apostle Paul is making reference to is our destiny. 
That, that's what God started in us. Amen. And the Apostle Paul expresses his confidence that the very God who started that work will complete it, will complete it, bring it in to completion, bring it in to perfection, bring it in to maturity. He expresses his confidence in God to do that based on their partnership. Amen. Ver verse 7, it says, it is right and appropriate for me to have this confidence, the, the confidence that he just expressed, and feel this way about you all because you have me in your heart and I help and I hold you in my heart as, key statement here, and this is another advantage, as partakers and sharers, one and all with me of God's grace, unmerited favor, and spiritual blessing. Well, when did they become partakers of that grace? When they contributed to his support. Amen. I believe all eight, I believe we've, we've, we've covered eight advantages. Eight advantages to sowing into the man of God's life. I believe out of all eight, this one is the most important. Us reaching our destiny in the Lord, which is an act of the grace of God, the grace that God has put on your man of God. But how do we access that grace? How do we partake of that grace? We partake of that grace through partnership. See, Jesus said that if you, you have to be found faithful with the unrighteous man before God can entrust you with the true riches. Well, the Apostle Paul called it grace. Jesus called it the true riches. It's the, it's the same thing. Amen. God is not trying to withhold his riches from us. He's trying to share his riches with us. But it's through us demonstrating faithfulness with our money. So when the Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian church, I put you at a disadvantage, one of the things he's saying, one of the truths that he's uh, informing them of is that he didn't give them an opportunity and it wasn't the Apostle Paul's fault. You go ahead and read the rest of the chapter. Do your own research. But they, they question him, as do most, most Christians question ministers, especially with regard to money. There's nothing new under the sun. And that's why, that's why he didn't take up an offering. But one of the disadvantages that they uh, now were facing was they didn't have an opportunity to prove themselves faithful with the unrighteous man. Therefore, God could not entrust them with the true riches. God could not give them access to the very grace that he put on the Apostle Paul with them in mind. Amen. The grace on a man or woman of God is for the people that that man or woman of God is ministering to. But those people have to minister to the man and wo or woman of God in order to access that grace. They have to be faithful with the unrighteous mammon. Amen. So Sunday, we have an opportunity. Let's, let's, just, let's just quickly go over the list and we'll be done. Number one, we have an opportunity to cause fruit to increase to our credit, to have a harvest of blessing accumulating to our account. Number three, that's, that's one and two, number three. Sunday, we have an opportunity to enter into partnership and open up, and most of us have opened up a debit and credit account. So since that account is open, we're making an additional deposit or additional credit in our heavenly account. 
That's the third. We have an opportunity to do something that's right, commendable, and noble. Amen. That's, I believe, number four. Um, we have an opportunity to call a fragrant odor, an offering, and a sacrifice which God welcomes and delights in to ascend into the presence of God. That's number five. We have an opportunity for God to supply all of our needs. That's number six. We have an opportunity to tap into the grace that is on the man of God's life. That grace, we are the object of that grace. That's number seven. So there's seven, seven or eight advantages that you and I have an opportunity to experience come this Sunday. Amen. So, in closing, I encourage you to put your best seat together. You're aware of our goal. Put your best seat together. Honoring the man of God. Where would we be without him? Where would we be without what God has done through him? Where would we be without accessing the grace that God has entrusted to our man of God for our benefit? Amen. So we're going to honor him. We're going to honor him in mind, of that, in mind of those benefits, those advantages that you and I experience. We've always already experienced them. We're going to continue to experience them. But, but we go from glory to glory. Amen. So let's prepare our seed and let's come Sunday. 100% of us, let's all come, the entire congregation, come Honor the man of God and receive these benefits. Experience the benefits of partnership. Amen. Glory to God. I believe you are blessed by the word of God today. Again, we're looking for 100% participation. Those of you who haven't come back, make it your goal to come back this Sunday. What, what better Sunday would there be other than the Sunday where we're celebrating our pastor? That'd be, that's, the, that's the best Sunday. Amen. We're, we're celebrating God's gift to us. So make it your goal to come back. Let your face be, be seen here so we can celebrate you. We miss you. You're a part of our family. You're valuable to this body of believers. Amen. God values you. God puts you here. God places the members in the body according as it pleases him. So when you're here, of obeying the charge that we that, that we all have, Hebrews 10, 25, to assemble ourselves together and do it even more faithfully as we see the day approaching. When we do that, God is pleased. Amen. And then I mean he's really pleased when we come to uh, honoring the man of God. Amen. So come on out, join us. We're going I'm believing God. We're we're all believing God for 100 percent participation. Don't forget. We're going to do the same thing on August 1st. And keep that going. Keep that 100% participation going until Jesus comes and raptures us out of here. Amen. We've got to do that faithfully. Amen. Glory to God. So let me, let me remind you of the four options that we made available for you to sow. Number one, you can sow online at VineLifeChristianFellowship.com. Number two, at the bottom of your screen, Located in the description box, you'll see the address. You can mail in your gifts to that address. Number three, uh, today is Tuesday. You can come down in person. That's the preferred method of our pastor. You can come down in person, drive by, and drop off your offering in person. If you're watching the 10 o'clock broadcast, a staff member will be here till 12 noon this afternoon to receive your offering in person. If you're watching at 7, a staff member will be here uh, till 8 p.m. to receive your offering in person. Amen? So we'll be glad to see you. If the three or four mentioned options don't work for you, you can choose the last one. You can give uh, Robin and I a call here at the ministry. We'll come to your place 
of residence and pick up your gifts in person. Make sure that they're delivered back here to the ministry safely and securely. Before we leave, let me declare the word of God over you as it's stated in Psalm 91. I declare that no evil shall befall you, no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. For our God has given his angels charge over you, that bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You made, you made the Lord God your refuge and your fortress. And you say of him, Lord, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, you are my God, and you I trust. When you give voice to the word of God, the angels hearken to that word that you've given voice to, and they carry out their charge of protection. Amen. We are safe as the body of Christ. Glory to God. We have nothing to fear. Amen. Trust you were blessed by the word of God today. Looking forward to you being here in person, celebrating our man of God's birthday this coming Sunday at 9.15. 100% participation in Jesus' name. Looking forward to seeing you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. For more information on Vine Life Christian Fellowship, please visit our website at www.vinelifechristianfellowship.com. Options concerning the tithe, offerings, partnership, or favor challenge are located in the description box below. It is our hope that you have been blessed and enlightened by this message. As we begin our online journey, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel ensuring that you will not miss future messages. On behalf of Vine Life Christian Fellowship, we would like to thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day, and we will see you next time.